so this is more a relevant for the immune therapy. Uh, so we know that the reason why AML immune therapy has not moved the same pace as an ALO is because there's shared antigen between AML cells and normal cells, including the monocytes, which could or could, may, may or may not be part of the tumor clone. Uh, but the problem is that when you engage the cells, there's a lot of uh, cytokine release, there's a lot of what we call cytokine release syndrome, a lot of toxicity, because, the, for example, they do express CD123. So when you use the bispecific antibody, for example, T cell engagers, uh, you get killing not only of AML cells, but also of this monocytes that release a lot of cytokines. And as a result, there's a lot of toxicity, uh, which requires interruption of the therapy, dose reductions, and and in the end, uh, it does not lead to improved outcomes. So that's a major issue in AML. And I think the field as a whole is looking for antigens that are differentially expressed uh, in AML versus healthy cells, or monocytes at least. Uh, but that's been challenging. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how we're going to overcome that. I think the antibody drug conjugate are a bit safer because they do not work through the engaging mechanism by just by killing. So if we kill some monocytes, maybe it's not, uh, there's no cytokine release syndrome in the ADC-based uh, antibody trials. Um, but as far as bispecific, I think the new attempts are to make the bispecific against, uh, let's say, the same antigen, CD123 and NK cell. So CD16 to engage NK cells. And the reason is that NK cells, they do not cause a lot of uh, cytokine release syndrome when they get engaged. So I think that's the next kind of uh, uh, iteration of the trial that is being ongoing. And we have to see how they're effective or safe they are.